So here we are at the Core Language Simulator once again, this time for week four. This week we're going to be talking about arrays. An array is a special type of variable. It's a variable that captures multiple values. So think of it like, you know, we talked about variables are like shoeboxes. Well, think of it as a bunch of shoeboxes tied together as one variable. And that's basically what an array is. So we're going to use a very similar program as we did last week. Uh, the requirements are to create a program that asks the user for how many numbers to add. And it uses a, a for loop, but it's going to store the it's going to store the values that the user inputs into an array. And then we're going to use another for loop to count up the numbers and put them in the total variable and display the total of the numbers is and the total. So we'll start with uh, some of the same exact uh, the same exact variables that we've been using. And I'm just going to copy them over here. Okay, now one that's going to be new to us is an array. And it's an array of integers in the same way that we declare any other variable. We have to tell it the type. But then we use this keyword array. And in a parentheses here, we're going to tell it the size of the array. Now because we're, going to, we're getting the size of the array as an input from the user, I'm going to put a question mark there. That means I don't know what the size is quite yet. But at some point in time, I'm going to have to put it in there before I use the array. And then we're going to name the array number array. Okay, We're going to start total at 0, like before. We're going to do our regular input or output first, and then input, like so. Okay. Now, once we get here, we know how big the array should be. So there is a function that we can use that says, that's called size, that sets the size of the array. And the size of it is how many numbers. It's the number that we got from the user. Now this function, by the way, in addition to using it this way, where you can set the value of the size or the size of the array, you can use it the other way where you can actually find out how many, how many, um, values there are in the array. We'll um, look at that later. So now let's write our for loop. For count equals zero. Done that before, right? Count is less than how many numbers. And then we have our accumulator or our iterator. Now what we could have done here is also said something like this, number array dot size. That would pull from the size of the array here. So let's just leave it like that for the fun of it. Okay, we're gonna do the same exact input that we usually do, like that. Whoops. And then, rather than the accumulating the total like we did before, we're gonna store the value that the user would have typed in and enter a number into the array. And we have to tell the computer, if you think about, now we've got four boxes, little shoe boxes that are a part of this array. We said it was four in size. You have to tell it which box to store it in. So we do it like this, number array. That's the name of our array. And then using these big square brackets, we put a number in there. Now we are using this number in count. So the first time around will be zero. That'll be the zero box. Most arrays start with the first box at zero instead of one. I know sometimes it's hard to get your head around, but that's pretty typical. And then we put in the box number to add. Okay. So that's really what goes in our first for loop. At the end of this for loop, we will have gone through all of the, all four of the numbers, collected them from the, in, from the input, and stored them in the array. Okay. Now the next thing it says in our requirements, we need to use a for loop to total up the numbers. So this statement put the numbers into the array. We're going to have to have a kind of a similar statement to pull them out of the array. We're going to have exactly the same for loop here because we want it to go the same amount of times around. But in this case, it's going to store total equals total plus 
number array, the square brackets again, and count again. So this time through the array, it's still going to go from 0 to 3, right? 0, 1, 2, 3. But each time around, it's going to put that value into total, the accumulation, and it will accumulate those numbers in total. Now, the last thing that we want to do, and we're all done here. By the way, I need to change this to slash n. I think I do that in every single one of these. That's right. Is to just output. So the total of the numbers is and then the output. Let's check our, our syntax. Now, oh, notice that. While we use the word count here, we didn't initialize it. You have to make sure that you always initialize every variable. Okay, let's try it again. All right, so this time it passed. So let's go to step. Let's go through this kind of slow so we can see it. It's collecting the value 4. Now notice how it shows 0 through 3 here. This is our array. We're putting the 10 in there first. And then it's collecting the 20, and then it's putting it in there. And then it's collecting the 30, it's putting it in there. And remember, we changed this to a 39 last week so we could see it be 99. All right, now it's going to go back again through the for loop. And this time it just keeps adding to total. Notice that. And the total should end up at 99. Drops down and produces the output. So our output here is the total of the numbers is 99. So during this week video, we've talked about how to use arrays, how to declare an array, how to set the size of an array if you don't know what the number is to start with how to add values to an array, and then how to get values out of an array. All of those things we've learned during this, this week's video. I hope you have a great week this week.